I'm not going to do an intro to this, we're just going to get into it. Hello, uh, family and friends, I'm Duncan Hoover, and today I figured I'd do a little bit of a fun video. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Transformers Robots in Disguise, both Takara, non-Takara, and reissues of Decepticon Mega Octane, Autobot Powered Up, Autobot Train Brothers, Knight Rider, and Rapid Run, uh, Midnight Express, I mean, and Powered Up Autobot, Autobot Younger Brother, Sideburn. So we're going to start with the only Decepticon, so to, let us take a look at Mega Octane. Now, Mega Octane, for those of you who are unaware, is a reissue and recolor of the 1985 Combaticon Onslaught. In fact, the entire Ruination character in R.I.D. 2001, or Cars Robots if you're in Japan, was Ruination. Those are the parts. This is, of course, the 2003 reissue, and the main reason you can tell this is the standard original reissue, uh, well, standard version of Ruination, actually had gold or yellowy versions of that instead of the grey in the um, back there and all the ducks in the background. So, Big Rotane is a truck, and all of the wheels roll. Like so. The plastic wheels, um, it's a bit hefty, it does have a bit of die cast in them. Getting, uh, let me look at the paint job. He does have a very nice, uh, camouflage with the Decepticon symbol right there. Because, you know, it cuts. Um, so yeah, so what is the role with the fact that this is a Decepticon symbol when Transformers RD01 or Cars Robot have Predacons? Well, halfway through the season, uh, Megatron found a whole bunch of Autobot protoforms and reformatted them into Decepticons. This was Mega Octane. Armorhide, Rollbar, uh, Rotor, and the shuttle, which I think was just uh, Vortex. No, Vortex was that, and I think, I don't remember. Uh, who were G1 Bruticus designs, and the new version of G2 Laser Optimus as Grant, as I think what he was called Black Convoy, or Scourge. And now Scourge is actually rumored to return in the Legacy lineup as a recolor of Optimus Prime. So let us get. Ruination into the combined form. So first of all, you want to remove the cannon and rotate the cannon up. You want to come and split the arms. You want to rotate them this way. This is so you can get the um, pegs up. But I like to rotate them up. Like so. You're going to fold back the legs and fold them up and out. And over. Like so. Then you're going to come to the mystical bits box and you're going to... There's a reason why they were folded that way. Take the Bruticus chest plate. Um, the post here is going to go into that hole in the middle of his chest. And of course, you're going to take Bruticus's helmet, or Ruination's helmet, and plop it on his head. And of course, if you had the G1, G2, and the basically any part of Bruticus or Ruination, they would fit into the arms and legs. So, yeah. It's a pretty dope looking figure. So let's get him into a robot mode. So you're going to remove the two Bruticus parts. Fold the arms down. Fold the legs and straighten them out. Careful not to put too much pressure on these poor old joints. You're going to come to this part. Pull out one fist. Two fist. You're going to come to the box. You're going to grab his rifle. And I'm going to put it in this hand because this hand's actually um, able to hold it. Bit better. Then you're going to take this chest part and it's going to go where the Bruticus part is. And here is Mega Octane. And as you can see, it's just Onslaught in green, grey, and orange. And so you get closer, as you can see, there is a lovely amount of green on him. This deep olive green. Whereas when you get to his shins, you get um, the camo painting. This is a backpack. I like to pull that down. Articulation-wise, he is a G1 character, so literally he can move his arms. So he can go pew pew bang, bang, pew pew bang, bang. Nothing at the head, nothing at the waist, nothing at the legs, except for sideways knee joints. You will have a field day for that. So that is the, and this is the 2003 reissue of Mega Octane. Let's take a look at. Oh, and a huge thank you to Team Mew and Azalea Meadows Gaming. Uh, for those of you who do not know, this was actually acquired through the Geek Market 
but because I was suffering COVID at the time, or the pandemic at the time, uh, I couldn't go, but I saw that uh, when the video call happened, and yeah, I got that now. So, moving on. Powered Up Cybin, which was given to me as a birthday present from my boss at Pretty Slick Parts and Sets over on Facebook. Fantastic group of pe uh, fantastic person. And this was one of his collections. Uh, he did used to have quite a few um, Transformers, Cybertron Megatron, Armada and Cybertron Jetfire, uh, Energon and Cybertron Jetfire, Energon Ironhide, Amada Wheeljack, Amada Tidal Wave, Amiga Supreme from Energon, and that was about it, of which I own a majority of them. But, uh, uh, and this is one of them, and of course, this god awful World War II um, Hot Rod. So this is Powered Up Sideburns as he appeared towards the end of the series. He became the Red Cor uh, which is a Dodge Charger Corvette, not Dodge, a Dodge Corvette Stingray. A very good looking figure. Now, unfortunately, he does have visible leg syndrome and visible head syndrome. It's literally right in the front of the windshield there, but unfortunately, due to the blind. Um, right then. Rubber tires, too. A little bit of an empty cavity. We've got a visible head syndrome and a visible arm syndrome. So, yeah, that's about all I really can say about the car mode. It's a good looking car, so let's get down to transformation. First of all, you want to pull out his butt blaster, fold out the doors, and untab the legs from the roof, and you're going to bring the roof up over, and you're going to rotate the legs out of the way, so you can get this arm up, and you're going to leave it alone, rotating the legs, well the waist forward, you're going to come to the legs, and you're going to unfold them, and fold up the toes. Come up. Oh, you want to rotate it this way, by the way. You want to untab the bonnet and the arm sections. That's going to basically be his cape. You're going to come here. You untab his arm and unfold it and bring it down. Bring up the bumper as well. You're going to have a fun little chance. It's because it's a lot of twisting. So you're going to bring that down. Like I said, bring the bumper out of the way. You're going to fold. And as you're doing it, you're going to make sure everything is almost as good because you want this wheel to go into this cavity here. Bring it down. Put the arm down. Straighten it out. Bring that down. You're going to bring up the head. Unfortunately, on my one, it is very loose. You're going to bring this arm up. Bring this down. And then you're going to rotate the shield basically down and out of the way. And there you go. I'll just give him his uh, bumper blaster, as I like to call it. I'll just give it on this arm because of this very nice Autobot symbol. Here we have Powered Up Cyburn. Now, for those of you who do not know who the hell Cyburn is, uh, fair enough, but he was the younger brother of the Autobot car trio, who was a blue Stingray, who had a thing for red sports cars. And, of course, that would get him in, tr got him in quite a bit of trouble uh, throughout the show. With his older brother Prowl and, of course, x -Braum. And, again, as I mentioned before, halfway through the show, he did get this upgraded form. But, like early... <coughs> this is where my tongue stops working. But, like many uh, in the show, he does suffer quite a bad mold. Uh, getting close in here, we have a very lovely head sculpt with a little bit of light piping up here. And of course, mine is unfortunately very loose. Arms can do a full 360, but you do have to be careful with the arm kibble, the roof, and the front bumper. On both arms, you get a bit of a bicep swivel. Bend at the elbow. Good. Over 90 degrees of bend at the elbow, and nothing at... Well, you do get a little bit... Nothing at the wrists. And I'm not going to try because this plastic I know is quite flimsy. You get a waist joint. Legs can go forward that far. You, you can even bend the knees up like that. Oh, that's unfortunate. Legs back that far. You can't do a full spread, uh, full splits <coughs> because of this um, rear bumper cast thing here. 
Just over 90 degrees of bend due to transformation, and of course you get some foot articulation. Final verdict, he is a very, very clumsy, clunkety toy, and I absolutely love him for it. Not only that, but this is also the version of Cyburn that was used for his shattered glass appearance. So for those of you who do not know, Shattered Glass Cyburn was actually based off this version of him, uh, who was a bit of a bit of a double crossing dirty bastard. So yeah, Cyburn. Finally, <clears throat> we get to the one that I am trying to collect him in, and that is two Japanese locomotives. Now these are the Japanese Takara versions. Unfortunately, the Takara versions were not great. So this is J5, or as we know him in the uh, West, as Rapid Run, uh, Rail Spike, I mean. And Rail Spike is a very lovely looking uh, Shingoku J5 bullet train. Love the blue, and I do love the um, differentiating colours. And of course, unfortunately on my one, this part here has come very loose, you'll see why. If I had the second one, which is, I think I'm missing Midnight, uh, the third one, which I think is Rapid Run, or something along those lines. Uh, yep, and for those of you who do not know, this guy actually did appear, uh, it was actually a member of the Lost Light crew. Um, it, was, it came out in a Q&A, like, hey, can Rapid Run be part of the, uh, Lost Light crew? And the guys were like, yeah, sure, why not? So, yep. No, unlike Bruticus, I'm not going to show you, uh, the... Oh, uh, the combination mode because it's just a pain in the butt. So let's get him down to robot mode. So first of all, you want to come here and you want to untap everything. You're going to take his weapon. You're going to fold this part up and fold up this part. You're going to come back here and fold down the handle. There is your gun. You're going to stand him up straight and you're going to extend the legs. And tab legs as well and rotate them around you're going to come to the back here you're going to find and pull down this wheel assembly this bogey and then you're going to fold up the feet now in here by the way is the hand of uh the combined form Oops, second verse is much like the first bring down fold up fold down I'm going to come up to the top here now, and we're going to fold down the arms, rotate them down, bring them down, and rotate, because they're on a double ball joint. Then you're going to come to the big combination here, you're going to fold it up and down and around and left and right, I'm kidding. You're going to basically untab this part, you're going to get it in there, get it all nice and squozen, to quote MEO, and that's going to sit in there, to flush out his chest, and then you're going to rotate his head around, and... Bada bing, bada boom. Rail spike. And he is a gorgeous looking figure. Very awkward though. Like, the, the, it's literally the top and the bottom half of the uh, J5. Ah, uh, well, does this? So articulation wise, his head is on a ball joint. And this does love to pop off occasionally. He can look up eh, pretty alright. I'm just going to move the arm out of the way. He can look down alrightish. Fortunately, the chest gets in the way. Arms can do a full 360. They can go up on the shoulder joint here. Double bend at the elbow due to the ball joint. And of course, you get swivels. And nothing at the... You don't get a waist joint, unfortunately. If you move <coughs> these panels up. These side skirt pieces up. You can bring the legs out to do the full splits. Legs can go forward, but unfortunately, due to this part being unmovable, they cannot go back, so literally he can only... He will have a stickman like running posture. By the way, the Takara versions are very different to the Hasbro versions, because I think not only colour scheme, but also um, due to the way that the moulding is done. So that is Rail Spike. Finally, we get to Midnight Express, who is a J7, I believe is what they say on the website. Um, again, another bullet train that operates in Japan, especially around the 2001 mark, as you can see. It's a very awkward chunk of plastic. I love the blue and the yellow and the white, though. That, that's pretty cool. 
and decide much to write home about. Let's get down to transformation. First of all, you want to remove this part. Now, yes, these will hook into the front holes up to the of the nose there. That's how you hook them onto each other. You're going to come to the leg to the waist and you're going to bring it down. And you're going to bring up these shoulder panels. Pull out the legs so that way you can bring that down to click into place. Rotate the legs at this joint, at the hip joint. Bring them down, rotate them forward. Bring this forward, bring and fold out and bring forward. And there you have one leg. Second verse, much like somewhat the first. Bring down, bring around, bring down. Then you're going to come to the front of the nose of the train, pull it down, rotate it around, fold it up, and then bring this part all the way back. Fold out the arms. Remove this little box. Fold out the arms. Bring up the head. Now, like uh, Rail Spike there, Midnight Express here, does love to pop off his head on his bull joint. You're not done yet, you're gonna fold down this tab to show off his like um, several pack of abs. Look, this dude has been working out. You're going to come to the weapon and you're going to plop it in around the right way because you want this little groove to match up with the blaster. You're going to fold down the pistol, you're going to bring this little handle forward and you're going to equip it into his hand and here we have midnight express or j7 and you get to see more of that lovely blue yellow and white color scheme with bits of black and gray and holy heck does this just oh it's awesome you can close here you can actually see he's got magenta eyes no light piping unfortunately but articulation wise his head is on the so we can look all the way down uh, due to the fact that it's also on a bit of a hinge joint as well, we can look up really far. Up. Whoa, that's a tree. <sighs> Fortunately, it is very tight. Arms can do a full 360. Shoulder pads can move. The arms go up and down. Uh, you don't get any bend at the elbow or the bicep, and the arms can go up and down. No waist joint. Legs can go forward, they can go back, and they can do the splits. Because you kind of have to make them do the splits to get them into train mode. But yeah. So these are, of course, the uh, parts of some of the Transformers R.I.D. figures that myself and Mr. Blazehorn Gaming own. Um, future reviews will include R.I.D. Galvatron, as well as R.I.D. Ultra Magnus and Optimus Prime. Anyway, this has been Dr. Nibbison G1 Superior, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!